Hey everybody, today I'm going to share with you one of my absolute favorite applications online and it's called canva.com. If you were with us during the lockdown last year, eighth graders, then you are familiar with this tool. Um, and if you have not used it before, welcome. This is a really cool tool that I think that you can really apply in a lot of other areas. I know a lot of other teachers that use this. Um, Canva has been really helpful in helping teachers set up their Canvas homepages like a lot of the little graphics, the little buttons and stuff on my homepage were made on Canva. I know Miss Braun used Canva a lot to make all of her graphics for home, her homepage as well. Uh, if you look around our classrooms, a lot of our signs are made on Canva. It's a really popular application. And the coolest part about it is it's free. You can pay for a, um, a higher version of this application. Uh, that is something that I do because I use it so often, but there is still so much available to you for free, not to mention you can always upload your own images, um, which makes it even more user friendly because you can have all the custom stuff that you want as long as you upload it yourself. So let's go ahead and get started by showing you how to split screen your computer. So right now I'm on the Chrome app and I have maximized my homepage. If I pull up another tab, so like, let's say that you were on Canvas right now watching this instruction and you wanted to also have Canva open on another tab, what you can do is actually just grab one of these tabs. So I'm pressing down with the mouse and drag it until it becomes its own screen. So it's, a, it's like its own little homepage there. Then I'm going to click the little minimize, not minimize button, but the restore button there and bam. Now I can have both tabs up at the exact same time. This could be really helpful for you while you're doing this instruction. Um, so you could pause right here if you want and get set up. You can have the instructions going on on one tab and then you could open up your Canva account on the other tab, which I'm going to show you what to do for that in just a moment. Moving forward, I'm going to go ahead for now and close this tab because I want to maximize it as much as I can for you. We're going to go to canva.com, C-A-N-V-A, and it's already come up for me, dot com. It's canvas without the S. And if you are starting this for the first time, you'll click sign up. Eighth graders who maybe did this last year or anybody else who's used this before, you can probably just click log in. But we're all going to go to sign up, sign up with Google. And you should see your school Google account, account appear here. If it does not appear there, it might ask you to go ahead and manually type in your email address and password. Once you have done that, Canva will open up. And this is the home screen. We're gonna go right over here to create a design. Now I wanna show you that when you are making your designs, you can start by putting in your own dimensions, but we are making a wallpaper for our desktop, which is already um, a format that exists on Canva. So we're gonna go ahead and use that. It appears top on mine because I've been messing around with it. You might have to scroll down in this list just a little bit farther to find it. And if you're struggling to find it, all you have to do is just type in desktop and there it is, wallpaper, boom. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to show you how to solve one of my greatest pet peeves. One of my biggest pet peeves is when people do not rename their work. <laughs> so over here under file, click there and see how it says untitled. Ugh. Can't say that when things are untitled. We're gonna go ahead and type in some sort of title for this. So maybe I'll type in watercolor. Name it something, just don't leave it untitled. Um, you can hit enter and now it's now it has a new name. That's cool. All right, we want to put um, a picture of our watercolor back here. So the first thing I have to do is take a picture of my watercolor. So open up my camera app here. Hello, welcome to my messy garage. And I'm going to go ahead and take a picture. I have the timer on here, which is really helpful. So I can kind of arrange it after I've clicked the button. I want to make sure my fingers are out of the way. There we go. 
Um, I don't need to make sure that it's like filling up the whole screen because I can crop it down in the next part. All right, so now I want to upload that picture I just took into Canva. So I'm gonna go to uploads. This is sort of like your little toolbar over here. This shows you templates. We are working from scratch, so we're not going to use a template, but this is handy to look through. If you're ever wanting to make some sort of like cute thing for your social media accounts or um, a neat graphic for another school project, school project, the, tam the templates have really cool options. Um, but what we wanna do is go down here to uploads, upload an image. We're going to upload from our device and it will be one of the recent pictures I took. It was also right there. You can see that I've already been messing around with this. <laughs> and it's almost done uploading, come on. There it is, okay. Now what I want to do is I want to drag this photo over here and I want to crop this down so that way I can't see my fingers and things like that. I'm also going to make sure that it fits the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is just sort of crop out some of this extra stuff that I don't need. So I'm going to drag the corners in and I also want to get rid of the hole punchies. Here we go. Now I'm going to click enter. And that will give me my regular picture back. And I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the corner and then drag this so that way it fills up the background. I can move it, position it so it's showing the part of my painting that I want to show. I think I'm happy with that. Now my picture looks really dull, but in real life, it's actually quite brilliant and bright. Part of the problem is the camera on the Chromebook is not real high resolution. You may have noticed that by now. Um, I'm also in my really dark garage. So to help with this, I'm going to use computer magic. I'm going to go to adjust right here. You get these options as long as you are clicked on your photo. So if you don't see these, it's probably because you have clicked off your photo just click on your photo and then you will see adjust. And here you can play around with the brightness, the contrast. Contrast helps to make things really pop. You can play around with the saturation. The higher the saturation, the more intense the color. The lower the saturation, the less intense the color. So if I actually pump up the saturation a little bit, it looks a little bit more like what I'm seeing in real life. I actually don't want it quite so bright. Okay, so that looks quite a bit closer. I would not mess around with the blur X process vignette stuff. Um, that just kind of puts shadows on, on areas. I also would not worry about the tint because that is going to mess around with the actual hues that you have painted in. Uh, but the saturation, brightness, and contrast, that's really helpful there. Okay, so once you are satisfied with how that looks, you can actually just click on the gray area around your picture and it'll take you back here to your regular screen. All right, now what I need to do now is insert some text. So I'm gonna go down here to text and you're gonna notice that there's some really cool fancy options down here and I'm gonna to get to those. The most basic way of inserting text is just click on one of these. You, since we want this to be fairly large, you can click on add a heading and you can type the quote in here that you want to use for this project. I would use something because your Chromebook is like your, your work tool. I would type in some sort of quote that's going to maybe motivate you, humor you, something that, you know, maybe is something that are, a reminder that you need to look at every day. Mine's kind of like that. So my quote is by a guy named Peter Marshall and the quote is small deeds done. And I'm going to go to my next line are better than great deeds planned. That's actually a quote that I have on my desk drawer at school because it is one of those things I need to remind myself. I tend to be an over planner. And sometimes if I, if things can't come to fruition the way that I have planned, 
I end up just not doing it and that's not okay. It's better to do something. Okay. So now the important stuff, we want to make this look pretty so that you can click here to change the font. And you'll want to click on a font that does not have one of these little crowns. The little crown is for the paid version of the app, but you can click on any other font that does not have the crown. And there's a lot of options all the same. Okay. The other important thing, we want to change the text color. So click on the little colorful A here. And it comes up with some default colors. If you like those, great. If they don't really suit you, then you can go up here to new color and you can choose da, 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 a new color. If you slide along this little colorful bar, you can select a hue and then move this around on this big window and you can change the tint and the shade of that color to something that you like. So that's the most basic way to add text. If you would like a fancier way to add text, you can play around with these font combinations. The tricky thing about using these is that they have a lot of them like multiple text boxes. So if you really like this good vibes thing, you're gonna notice that the pink is in one text box, the yellow is in another text box. So you'd have to figure out what part of your quote you want to put in one or the other. You can always get rid of one too. Like if you are like, oh, I like that pink, but I don't want the yellow. You can actually just click backspace on that. And then it's just the pink one again. You'll notice that these are huge letters. So you might have to resize it. You can type in a custom number. Um, so you could type in whatever your quote is and you can actually resize it from the corner and it will change the size of the text also. So let's say I want to use this one because I do, I do want to use this one. <laughs> I like it. All right, let me point type my quote in here again. Small deeds done. Go ahead and minimize this a little bit. Better than great deeds planned. Okay, so regardless if you took the first plan where you added a heading here, or if you are adding one of these fancy combinations here, you are going to want to put something behind or around your text to make it more emphasized. Emphasis is one of those principles of design that we've talked about. And right now, it just if you squint your eyes, it's very busy. There's not a whole lot that really draws our eye to the quote itself. So what I'm going to do is go over here to elements. And the elements are just like the fonts where some of them are free and we want to use those. Some of them have this little crown and they are only available with the pro edition that you have to pay for. So as you are finding elements in this next part, you want to look for things that are free. When you hover your your cursor over them, it will tell you that it's free. Um, so the elements are basically shapes and illustrations and things you can put behind your text. Um, you're also going to see these little uh, stickers, animated stickers. I would avoid using those because we're going to put them as your wallpaper. You want something that's going to not be, be moving. Um, all right. I like to put little like brush stroke shapes. So I'm going to search brush stroke. So I'm going to find something kind of like this that I want to fill up behind my text like this. Now you'll notice that when I resized it, I no longer can see my text. I want to then go to position and click backward. So that way now my text is sitting on top of the shape. All right, that's good. 
Next thing I want to do is I want to recolor this brush stroke so that way I can see my yellow text. Maybe a little bit more greenish. I wonder what orange looks like. Let's try orange. Ooh, that's pretty too. Maybe that was a little bit darker. That would look nice. That's nice. Okay. So you can use any sort of shape or element you want to put behind your text. Like I said, I like the brush strokes and there's a lot of options on Canva. But if you want to use some sort of like basic shape too, let me get back on this. You will see that shapes are an option. Let's click on all these options here. Some of them have more resize options than others. So like these first basic shapes are nice because when they first come up, let me click a different color so you can see what I'm playing with here. You can actually drag the edges of these and resize them so they're different um, proportions, but not every shape is like that. Some of these other shapes as you get down here that are more fancy, like this one here. This one will not allow you to drag the sides. You can only resize it from the corner, which is always going to keep it in this squarish format. So just that's just something to keep in mind when you're choosing the thing that you want to put behind your text. The other thing you can do um, with your elements that you put behind your text when you click on it is you can click on this transparency button here. And if you want to be able to see some of your painting through it, you can actually make it more and more transparent. I feel like in my design, it still makes it really busy. So I'm going to actually leave it pretty opaque like that. Um, but I am pleased with this. Now, the last thing I realized I didn't do was I did not give credit to the author. So let me add that really quick. I am pleased with that. So once you have your element, your text, and your photo all arranged, the last thing you need to do is download this to your computer and make it your wallpaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the download button here. And you wanna click the PNG, which is already comes up as the suggested type. That's a image file type, click download. And your download